Welcome back, everybody. We're glad to have you with us for this installment of Just Lunch during Women's History Month. We're excited to have with us Pastor Sarah Shingledecker, who formerly served on the Churchwide Executive Board, um, but has had several uh, changes in her life. Um, you might have known her as Sarah Larson. She um, has gotten married. She's gone to seminary. And earlier this year, she was ordained and is now serving two congregations in southwestern Minnesota. Sarah, welcome. We're glad to have you with us. I'm glad to be with you all. Excellent. Well, can you tell us um, what there was about your experience in being part of Women of the ELCA that really nurtured your sense of call? Well, I'm going to go back just a little bit. Um, you know, I grew up Catholic, actually. I went to Catholic school and uh, married a Lutheran boy, um, kind of unexpectedly. I mean, not, it came up unexpectedly. I just got married on a vacation, came back, talked to the priest, and he was like, I think you should become Lutheran, which I was like, hmm, that's hmm. kind of weird. But, um, you know, because my dad grew up Lutheran, my mom was Catholic, and I just didn't think it was that big of a deal. But um, then when I started getting into what is it this Lutheran thing is, um, my pastor passed me off to the women. And he said, they know more than anyone. So, so I started hanging out with the women of the ELCA in a local unit in Silrood in Ballton, Minnesota. And uh, those women lifted me up and they kept cheering me on and giving me roles. And pretty soon I was raising up through the, the ranks of the women of the ELCA um, and became involved with the, the national organization. And uh, I just was a, such a gift for me to have those women leading me and uh, encouraging me and standing beside me. And as the more events that I went to and, and such, um, people would say, you know, Sarah, you have some, some gifts here that I, I think you could uh, use in as becoming a pastor. And I was like, ah, you know, I don't think so. Cause I'm kind of a Martha, you know, I'm not really, you know, the Mary type and they're like, well, but the more exposure that I had to, to women, um, in the ELCA and women pastors, I was like, oh, well, you know, there's not just one cookie cutter thing. I mean, people can be who they are. And, and, uh, so the, my sense of call just continued to grow in my exposure and, um, to other women and other ministries and other things. And as a women of the LCA, um, I went to an event in South Africa. And I really think that that's what was the turning point for me. I had gone through a divorce and um, I was really just kind of trying to rediscover who I was. And uh, those experiences in South Africa and being in new cultures, I've learned this and in, in all my travels is being in a different culture helps you re-examine your own culture that you're in and your own, um, get more understanding of who you are as a person. So that really got me into uh, this sense of cause. And I would say that um, part of my um, ordination service, uh, I opened with the, the mission statement for the women of the LCA because that was such an important part of me being called into ordained ministry. And so I had everybody stand up, you know, and we, we recited it together and that was our opening. That's, that's great. Well, wonderful. Um, we should say uh, perhaps that uh, Sarah served on the 20, well, she was elected to serve on the 2017 to 2020 tri uh, Triennium Executive Board, but then that was the, the board that served longer <laughs> because of the pandemic into um, 2021. Yeah, yeah, so I think four years then. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. But I like to say I'm a woman of the ELCA, not in the ELCA, because I feel like we are um, this broad organization of, of women that have a, a mission and a ministry, and we're not just in something, but we're of something. So I appreciate that. The, mm -hmm. the little words are really important. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Sarah, what, um, how does uh, Women of the ELCA continue to inspire your ministry? Well, uh, I think that you guys all do a great job of cultivating um, wonderful resources and then sharing them. And so, 
Um, as a new busy pastor with um, two congregations and just trying to get to know everyone, um, I don't have a ton of time to be like, you know, researching and reading in addition to Lent and funerals and everything else. But each day I can, on the daily grace, I can get something really quick and poignant, and then it can inspire me or direct me. And a lot of times it just calls me back into this awakening that it ain't all on me, right? It's not on my shoulders. This is God's work that we're doing. And um, it just is, a, uh, I think, such a great, like, support system really um and then the blogs i think are exceptional I, I just appreciate that you're able to find wonderful women who are doing the work or who are doing the research and have this wealth of knowledge to share and you can share it in little tidbits so that there's ways to get to more information but it's also like quick and concise and um poignant. And I also appreciate that it stays with the lectionary too, because a lot of times um, I'm like searching for something more to say for the week and I'll be like, oh yeah, that's a good way to imagine it too. So I, I really appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you. Well, Pastor Sarah, what uh, welcome resources support you in your ministry and what resources do you point others to? Well, I, I think that the um, women of the ELCA does a really good job of indicating what are good sources out there to subscribe to or listen to or to support. And so I think uh, that is something that I, I don't have to go and do all the research then usually to say like, okay, where is this money really going to, right? Or mm -hmm. who, who, what is this person doing? you know, in their backyard or, you know, who else are they contributing to? Um, because a, lo a lot of times, you know, we, we uh, have this bait and switch kind of idea where people are enticing you to give to something or to support someone, but then behind the scenes, they're doing something else. And, and uh, it's, there's this era of skepticism that we live in today. And um, I appreciate the, knowing that uh, the sources that the women of the LCA provide the opportunities to give um, are sound and um, theologically sound, you know, that they've got a good base to them and there's a good reason why we're giving to those people and that it's actually going to the people that we, that you all uh, raise up and lift up. So, you know, you know, probably three or four years ago, maybe not many people knew about International Women's Day, but I noticed this year, lots of women were posting about that. Lots of right. pastors who uh, maybe before hadn't really even women pastors who hadn't really recognized that day, but you all have been lifting that up for some time. Mm -hmm. And the trend is coming up to just create awareness and understanding and um, though that's the thing that I like to do is pass that information on then to the people that I'm working with or my friend base and just, you know, kind of say, hey, these are the other things that are out there. Like these are the ones that these are a sound situation. These these uh, resources are good. So look into them. Spend time. Awesome. Um, how are you involved in the organization now? So the. I have two congregations that I'm serving and we are merged together for we're one body in, in worship. Um, and both of those churches have um, active women. Uh, you know, the idea of an active unit has changed tremendously over the last 10 years. And so um, whether or not that they call themselves a Welka unit is, is different in each one and whether or not they, I think they still have like titles, you know, president and such, but it's been beautiful to see them merge together and try to, uh, you know, not step on each other's toes, but be able to, to share their ministry together. And that's really an example of what we're all doing. We're all trying to find a way to merge ourselves together and to share this ministry. And, um, you know, within the last couple of years, you've been able to have individual membership. It's not just a, a specific unit. And to be able to explain to women, as I have done for since I started, since I became a Lutheran, that, you know, you are a woman of the ELCA. You're not just in this, but you're of it. So what 
um, what you can provide and what you can contribute is of value. Um, and you don't have to be in a, a specific unit to, to be able to participate and access the resources and contribute and, and find, um, mostly find support, right? I feel like that's our biggest thing um, that, we, that we do. When I became active, it was because of these women who, who took me under their wing, who led me, who directed me. And so that's what, uh, you know, my vision is for how I will continue to, to foster and grow this program is to continue to lead up uh, other young women and also to encourage uh, um, women to connect with each other intergenerationally and, um, you know, just finding ways to be in relationship with each other. Thank you. Well, it's been great talking with you, Sarah. We've um, enjoyed working with you over the years. And uh, we look forward to seeing what your ordained ministry, um, how that shapes up and how you serve uh, Jesus and all of that. We will be back here next week with another conversation. And then we, so we have two more yet to get us through Women's History Month, um, the month of March. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.